Hi, I'm Professor D.K. Panda from the Ohio State University. Together with my colleague, Dr. Hari Subramani, we are very excited to present our work, which is titled Designing High-Performance Scalable Middleware for HPC, AI, and Data Science in Exascale Systems and Clouds. As many of you know, we are in a very exciting phase of the uh, high-performance computing. We had we have the Fugaku system currently delivering like 442 petaflops, and we are aiming for the exaflop systems in the very near future. It may be coming towards the end of this year or the next year. So in this context, one can try to ask a question, how do we design the software systems for this kind of uh, large scale systems to take care of not only HPC, but uh, deep learning, machine learning, data sciences. So all these things come back to the middle box here, which is called programming models. So there are different programming models for these different kinds of environments. Uh, it can be MPI, it can be PGAS, CUDA, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Hadoop, Spark, etc. So now if you take a look at the systems, how these systems are being built with commodity computing environments, like we have multi-core, many-core architectures, we have different kinds of networking technologies, different kinds of accelerators, and at the top, we want the application kernels of the applications like HPC, DL, ML, or data science to get the best performance. How do we bridge the gap? And this is where the role of the middleware comes in. And below that programming models, we have the communication library, which is uh, for the runtime, uh, trying to take care of the uh, programming models. And one can design this in a layered manner, or one can also take care of co-designing. So there are a lot of co-design opportunities people have explored over the years. Um, that means you, you make some enhancements at different layers and put them together. And uh, that leads to very nice designs, which lead to performance, scalability, and resilience. So in this context, let's ask the question, as we are heading into the exascale system, how people are trying to design the MPI, which is like the message passing interface. So that is a very common programming model. And together with that, people are exploring different kinds of combinations like OpenMP or PGAS, which is in general called MPI plus X. So if you take a look at this bulleted list items, I don't want to go over all the details, but these are some kinds of the requirements or a wish list. Whatever the programming models we design, it should be able to scale from million to million process. These are point-to-point -point communication. The job startup should be very good. It also needs to have very low memory footprint because if the programming models are the middleware, takes a lot of memory, then applications cannot run on the systems very well. So then of course we need a very good support for scalable collective communication. These are like for all reduce, reduce, all to all kind of things. And as the nodes are becoming fatter with more and more number of cores, we also need to balance internode and internode communication. We need to provide support for efficient multi-threading, integrated support for accelerators, fault tolerance, resiliency, quality of service support, Etc. Etc. So in this context, we have this um, uh, project we started. Uh, it's called MBAPIS2 project. Uh, many of you might be uh, familiar with this uh, project. Um, uh, for many years, we have been working on this thing. Uh, we almost started working on this at the day one of InfiniBand. When the InfiniBand was introduced in 2020, we were ready to actually start working on a high-performance API design on top of InfiniBand. And uh, prior to that, we are working on some commodity interconnects like Mirinet and Quadrix. Some of you might be remembering those names. But since that time, we started actually from the, in 2000, and in 2001, we actually had our first open source version demonstrated at the Supercomputing O2, almost like a, a 19 years back now. And over the period, we have been continuously enhancing it as the MPI standard has been evolving, as the newer technologies like Omnipath, IWAR, Rocky, AWS, EFA, et cetera, have come. We have been continuously enhancing the software stack. And currently these libraries are being used by more than 3,200 organizations in 89 countries. Just from our website, we have more than 1.46 million downloads. It is also available with a lot of other software vendors and Linux distros like Red Hat, SUSE, OpenHPC, and SPAC. We don't keep track of those downloads. And it's also, very widely being used in a lot of top 500 systems, like some of the examples are indicated here, 
both on the CPU side as well as on the GPU side. So we have been empowering a lot of these top five systems for more than 15 years. Here it shows like the our release timeline and downloads as you can see um, in the last several years we have been steadily um, rising um, in our uh, downloads uh, from our side. Here we show actually the overall architecture of the MAPISTO software family, even though we started with HPC, but now we have expanded into deep learning, machine learning, and data science. And this is where we'll be spending a lot of time today. Um, so as you can see, like a, at, at below, uh, we provide a lot of support for um, all different networking technologies. Here we have support for many core architectures, uh, including oscillators, uh, NVIDIA, as well as uh, GPUs. We have support for MPI, PGAS, and also hybrid MPI plus X. And this is where we have all our uh, scalable communication runtime. Um, we carry out the research, we come up with the best designs, we publish these, and then in around that six to nine months of time, we take these designs into our open source distribution and uh, do a very rigorous testing and then make it available to the, to the community. So there is a, over the years as different requirements have come up, we have actually multiple different uh, versions of this library. We call it like MRPS2 software family. So the basic one is MRPS2 and MRPS2. Um, Azure, like the Azure version, we also have an MRPS2X and MRPS2GDR, which is for uh, GPU. So we'll gradually provide some highlights of these uh, different releases and how as an end user, you should be able to utilize uh, these libraries for your needs uh, for whether it is for HPC or deep learning, machine learning or data. So this is the latest release we made a few months back. Uh, that is our MRPS2 uh, 236. Uh, it has a lot of features. Um, uh, you can get more details from our website. So let me just try to highlight um, some of these uh, 23CX GA release, uh, some of the uh, features, uh, especially for internal and internal communication, startup, collective offload, uh, and also very nice features of our performance engineering with MPI. So here it shows um, some numbers of the very latest AMD Milan system uh, together with Infinimand uh, SDR200. Um, so as you can see, this is like internode node latency. We are able to deliver between process to process within running on the same socket, almost like 190 nanosecond. Within that time, we are able to actually communicate an MPI communication. And here you can see right inside the bandwidth, we are able to deliver around 41.87 gigabyte per second. And this internode here again is um, on the InfiniBand uh, uh, SDR200 uh, on the AMD Milan platform. We are around like a 1.9 microsecond, uh, uh, halfway around trip, like a point-to-point -point communication. And we are able to come very close to the, to the peak bandwidth, which is 22.3 um, gigabytes per second. So as these systems are becoming very large, when you are trying to run a job, whether it is a traditional HPC or machine learning, deep learning, the job startup itself takes a lot of time. So this is what we have been continuously uh, optimizing over the uh, last uh, several years. So, so here you can see like a, um, your left hand side, if you see like a number of processes to 3,584 processes, we are able to achieve this just in a very small time, as you can see. Even for a very large, like a 229,000 processes on 4,000 nodes, MPI in it just takes 31 seconds. Okay? Just in 31 seconds, your job is ready to, to run. It is also delivering competitive performance compared to um, other MPI libraries. Now, some of you might have been hearing these days, especially um, Mellanox, which is a part of NVIDIA now. Uh, they are trying to work on a lot of in-network um, uh, computing. Uh, so especially if you want to do collectives um, like reduce, all reduce, um, barrier, etc., uh, these operations can be done within the network itself. So we have done a very tight integration with SAR, that is the technology is being delivered by NVIDIA, and we have done some further enhancements on top of that. And, and you can actually, if your system has a SARP, you can just use this uh, runtime parameter MB2 enable SARP equal to one. And here you can see very good performance. For example, here it is MPI all reduce, um, this is on the large scale frontier, almost the complete one, 7,861 nodes uh, when it was configured um, um, a few months back. Um, so here you can see on the x-axis, 
we have message sizes up to 2 kilobytes, we are able to deliver almost 5x improvement compared to the pure software based solution. We have a lot of optimized software version uh, implementation of the all reduce, but compared to that, now the in network computing support, we are trying to deliver almost by a factor of 5x improvement, here a factor of 9x, and similarly here MPI reduce, almost factor of uh, 6x. So there are a lot of other features. You may not have time to go over all these things. Uh, I'll strongly recommend you to visit the map web page. But over the years, we are also been working very closely with um, uh, University of Oregon uh, and Parak Tools. So they have a uh, software environment called Cow. So we have done a very tight integration. The MPI 3.1 standard uh, actually allows um, something called MPIT, which is like a tools interface. So through this tools interface, you can actually make the MPI library instead of a black box, you can actually make it a white box. So that means a lot of performance can be provided to the upper layers. You can do some analysis and then dynamically control the behavior through the control of control behavior. So we have this integrated support and that actually helps a lot in terms of performance engineering. When you are running a job, if you see that some, some place you are losing time, some other place you are not able to, it is taking a lot of memory, uh, jobs are not scaling, you should be able to get all this information um, and then based on your analysis, you should be able to optimize a lot of internal parameters and get the best performance. Thanks, Dr. Panda. So far, we were looking at some of the basic features that all MAPH2 software stacks offers. Now let's go into some advanced features offered by uh, the MAPH2 uh, family of software libraries. In this uh, section, we will look at uh, the MAPH2X and the MAPH2X with support for the Amazon Web Services uh, high performance computing clusters. Now, while the MAPH2X has a lot of uh, different advanced features in this particular uh, presentation, we would just be focusing on uh, some select ones. So the particular ones we'll be focusing on here are the uh, direct connect transport protocol, from, uh, the cooperative rendezvous protocol, uh, optimized asynchronous progress mechanisms, and uh, XPMM based collective operations. Now let's look at uh, each one of these underlying features and try to see what sort of an impact this feature can have on the performance of end applications. So if you look at high performance computing, scale is an important factor. So you need to go across multiple nodes and uh, you need to uh, be able to go probably up like hundreds or even thousands of nodes. So when this happens, your network transport protocol becomes very critical and a transport protocol with, which provides low overhead to uh, your communication middleware is essential to achieve this. So here we look at the performance that an advanced uh, transport protocol like DC can offer over your regular reliable connected, uh, which is something similar to TCP IP on the Ethernet world can offer. So here we are looking at the performance of an application called Neuron, which performs dense uh, collective communication patterns between all processes involved at different scales on uh, the uh, Blue Brain cluster at uh, uh, EPFL in uh, uh, Switzerland. So as we can see, while at uh, a small number of processes like 512, the basic uh, connection management and the basic transfer protocols are fine. As the scale of the job increases, advanced uh, mechanisms uh, that MAPH2X has, has significant benefits over the basic mechanisms as you can see. And more details are available in this talk uh, that was presented by Dr. Matthias Wolf at the MAPH user group uh, meeting uh, in uh, 2020. So you can see that at very large scales, the overhead for the RC protocol for connection establishment and communications become very apparent. Now let's go to the concept of a cooperative rendezvous protocol. Now what is a cooperative protocol? So what is so cooperative about this communication? If you look at a typical communication that happens in a high performance computing uh, uh, runtime like uh, MAPH2 or OpenMPI or Intel MPI, what would happen is that process A would try to send a pro uh, message to process B. Process B would be uh, passively waiting for the message to complete. But in the cooperative mechanism, what happens is that both processes participate equally to progress the communication by uh, partitioning the load between themselves. 
So by doing this, we are able to show significant benefits in performance for large message latency and bandwidth, which leads to up to 19% improvement for the Graph 500 benchmark at 15,036 processes. Now Graph 500 is a very popular benchmark uh, used in the uh, high performance computing uh, world. And as with the, all the solutions that we mentioned here, these are available as part of uh, the MAPH2 family of uh, software libraries. Now, one of the most critical requirements of any communication runtime is the ability to make progress or progress of communication. So obviously, when the control is in the communication runtime, progress is uh, very uh, straightforward. But what happens when the control is outside the communication runtime and maybe inside the application trying to perform some compute? So who will progress the communication then? Unfortunately, the answer is no one. And that is where we have tried to propose a new, uh, more optimized asynchronous progress design, which is more generic and applicable to different uh, high performance communication interconnects uh, out there in the world. So with such a design, such a, such a generic design, we are able to see up to 33 and 29% imp uh, improvement in the performance of P3D FFT and the HPL application at a fairly large number of processes. So going forward, the XPMEM or shared address space uh, solutions is something that is very critical and has the potential to improve the performance of communication operations in the runtime by several factors. So here we have used the uh, shared address space paradigm to improve uh, or accelerate the reduction based collectives that the message passing interface offers. So here we show the example of uh, OSU all reduce and OSU reduce, which uh, are two benchmarks which implement the MPI all reduce and MPI reduce uh, primitives. And as you can see, the shared address based true zero copy reduction collective designs in MBAPH2 provides up to 4x improvement for reduce and up to 1.8 times improvement for uh, all reduce at the, at the large message size. Now, going forward, let's see how these uh, designs translate to the high performance computing clouds like the Amazon Web Services EFA ARM HPC instances. So here we are comparing MAPH2 versus another popular implementation of the MPI runtime uh, library called OpenMPI. So as you can see, for collective communication patterns, critical collective communication patterns like all reduce and scatter, the MAPH 2x runtime is able to outperform OpenMPI by a fair uh, margin. So here we again uh, look at uh, the performance of MAPH 2x versus other competing runtimes on the Oracle's uh, OCI HPC uh, cloud ecosystem. So here we have uh, measured the performance of collective operations on eight BM uh, HPC2 uh, instances. And uh, we look at the performance of broadcast and the reduced collective. So we can see that uh, MBAPH 2x is able to outperform uh, the competing MPI libraries by large orders of uh, magnitude for different message sizes. So with that, uh, let's switch gears and look at more of the GPU computing side. So, so, so far, whatever we have mentioned have been focusing on accelerating your CPU based performance and performance on um, let's say large scale HPC systems. But what about the uh, performance on NVIDIA and AMD GPUs and the associated GPU enabled deep learning applications? So that is what we are going to be looking at in the upcoming uh, sections about MAPH2 uh, GDR. So the MAPH2 GDR, uh, again, we make continual releases of all of these software uh, stacks uh, periodically. Uh, and they are available for free download uh, from our website. So these kind of uh, show some of the more uh, uh, salient features offered by the latest release. So one, uh, a few of the more critical features is the supply, uh, support for on the fly compression of point to point messages. Now, what does this mean? So GPUs have a lot of computing uh, power. So we are trying to see if we can use some of this computing power to compress a message on the fly and send it out so that instead of sending maybe a 64 megabyte message, maybe we can send a 16 megabyte message and save significantly on communication time. 
We have also added integrated support for the uh, NVIDIA's collective communication library called Mikkel for various MPI collectives. And uh, the latest release also has full support for the NVIDIA DGX and DGX2 uh, range of HPC systems. So with that, let me uh, present the highlights of uh, some MAPSU GDR features for HPC, deep learning, machine learning, and data science. So we'll talk about uh, what CUDA Aware MPI is, the support for AMD GPUs, the support for on-the-fly compression, optimized collective communication support for the DGX systems, and how all of these can benefit high-performance deep learning, machine learning, and data science with DASC. Now, what is GPU-aware uh, communication runtime? Now, if you take a look at it, what is your traditional model for using GPUs? So what happens is an application developer would um, copy some data from the CPU to the GPU, launch a kernel. Once the kernel is complete, copy the data back to the CPU and then move the data from uh, CPU to remote CPU. So again, from the CPU, copy data to the GPU, finish the compute, move it to the CPU and move it out So uh, and uh, do uh, similar operations here. This, while is very uh, simple to do, is not a high performance and it adds additional overheads to the user. So what we are trying to uh, see is this. Can the user just move the data from the CPU to the GPU and then call an MPI operation from data that is resident on the GPU and allow the MPI library to handle the data movement. So the application developer will, uh, can call MPI send on a device buffer, that is a GPU buffer, and the communication runtime will take care of optimally staging the data uh, from GPU to the remote GPU using a variety of mechanisms. So using this, we can achieve high performance and high productivity. Now, why, why is it high productivity? Because now the user does not have to specifically move the data after the compute happens from the GPU to the CPU. And why is it high performance? It is basically because of this. Modern HPC architectures are so complex that moving data from a GPU to a remote GPU has 16 possible different paths, depending on the relative locations of the CPU, the GPU, and network adapter. For a typical application developer to be aware of these 16 different paths is just ridiculous. And they should not be forced to do it either. Your traditional application developer is a domain scientist, like a physicist, a chemist, um, or like a, a weather modeling person. So they should not be forced to understand the intricacies of underlying uh, hardware architectures. That should be the domain of the communication library. So that is what we aim for to provide a high performance and highly productive communication runtime to perform device to device communication and that is MAP H2 GPU. So what's the big deal with all of these things? The big deal is this, with such high performance communication mechanisms, we can provide 1.85 microseconds communication performance from GPU on one physical compute node to a GPU resident on another physical compute node. So that is a factor of 10 improvement from naive data transfer mechanisms that our, uh, regular users would have to use otherwise. And the same improvements extends to the bandwidth and bidirectional bandwidth operations uh, as well. So this benefit is not only seen on one type of architecture like x86, the same benefits are seen on other architectures like the open power architecture with NVLink 2 uh, interconnecting the GPUs. Uh, so here are some performance numbers from an open power uh, system with NVLink 2 and Volta V100 uh, GPUs and two ports of EDR uh, InfiniBand. So we get a uh, in, in, intranode latency of around 0.76 microseconds and an internode latency of 2.18 microseconds and an intranode bandwidth of 65.48 gigabytes per second and a peak internode bandwidth of uh, 23 gigabytes per second. So on this slide, we look at the performance of uh, the latest NVIDIA A100 GPUs on AMD's uh, Epic, uh, six, uh, Epic processors, like the latest generation uh, AMD's Epic processors. 
So here we are uh, looking at uh, two different uh, metrics, uh, intranode, uh, uh, device to device uh, or GPU to GPU, point to point communication latency and bandwidth and internode as, as in between two compute nodes, uh, device to device or GPU to GPU, point to point latency and bandwidth. And uh, the system has eight uh, 200 gigabits per second uh, HDR uh, InfiniBand adapters from NVIDIA. So as we can see, the MAPH2 communication runtime is able to offer very low latencies and is able to saturate the network bandwidth uh, quite uh, well here. So, so far we've been looking at the NVIDIA GPU ecosystem. So now we are looking at the AMD GPUs. So here we look at uh, the performance that AMD GPUs uh, uh, or MAPH2 GDR can provide on systems with uh, AMD GPUs. So this is uh, your intranode and internode point-to-point -point latency. So as we can see, uh, we have a very good uh, performance for within a node and across uh, two different compute nodes for point-to-point -point operations and same uh, uh, is uh, true for collective operations. So here we compare two different uh, state-of-the-art communication runtimes, MAPH2 GDR and uh, OpenMPI with uh, UCX support. So we can uh, see that we are able to beat the competing runtime by fairly large orders of magnitude uh, in the collective range uh, and as well as the point-to-point -point range for the uh, medium to large message sizes. So now let me talk a little bit about uh, on-the-fly compression and uh, the corresponding support in GDR. So modern high-performance computing systems are computationally very dense. However, the amount of communication bandwidth from one node to uh, like a different compute node is not that high. So this presents an ecosystem where you have islands of computation interconnected by rather narrow uh, bridges or interconnects. So what we are trying to uh, do is can we balance the system? So this system is inherently imbalanced with a lot of intranode bandwidth and communication capability but very little internode communication bandwidth. So can we balance this out? Can we balance this out and use the additional compute capability on modern GPUs to compress data that is being sent over the wire on the fly uh, with zero changes to the application and uh, with no change to the data validation as in even though you are compressing, the data validation is still fine. Can this be done? So this is what we have tried to achieve <coughs> in the MPAPH2 GDR communication runtime. And here we see the impact of these designs on the AWP ODC seismic uh, or earthquake uh, prediction or earthquake modeling application out of the San Diego Supercomputing Center. So these were presented in IPDPS uh, in 2021 and it was a best paper finalist. So the main thing is that we are able to significantly reduce the uh, overall uh, communication uh, volume of communication thereby reducing the uh, runtime per step so we can see that we are able to increase the computing flops and the runtime per step uh, for very large number of gpus on modern hpc systems so <clears throat> this support is again uh, available with the latest uh, uh, release of mapish2 uh, gdr library uh, which is freely available from uh, our website for download. In this slide, we look at uh, the performance of uh, collective operations on the DGX2 A100 uh, system. So these are the latest and greatest systems uh, from NVIDIA for uh, high performance computing, deep learning and uh, machine learning for anything that has to do with uh, GPUs. So it has a very rich uh, communication architecture for intranode and internode communications. So here we compare the performance of uh, two of the most popular uh, middlewares for uh, GPU to GPU or NVIDIA GPU to GPU communication. One is MAPH2 GDR and the other is NVIDIA's uh, collective communication library or NICL. So as we can see, MAPH2 GDR is able to outperform uh, NVIDIA's NICL collective communication library for all the different collective operations that NICL support like all gather, broadcast, reduce and all reduce for all sorts of message sizes and uh, like different number of nodes and processes per node. So you will see that MAPH2 GDR always performs equal to or better than nickel.
Now let's see how one can use MRAPH2 or let's say MPI driven infrastructure for accelerating machine learning and deep learning training. So here we are looking at two different ways. So if you look at traditional or let's say typical MLDL applications, they use um, one of the a few popular uh, machine learning deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch or MXNet. Then in order to have, uh, let's say, good scalability, they use Horawat from uh, Uber. Or if you are using uh, PyTorch, then you have the additional uh, flexibility of you either using DeepSpeed uh, or uh, PyTorch's own distributed communication runtime. Okay. Now, these uh, distributed communication uh, abstractions ha can be accelerated by using MPI-driven or let's say MRAPH2 driven uh, communication substrates. So these are the uh, possibilities here. So you can either use MRAPH2 or MRAPH2X for accelerated distributed uh, high performance CPU based training or MRAPH2GDR for similarly GPU based training. So on any of these compute uh, architectures. So what is the benefit of using advanced communication runtimes like MRAPH2 uh, GDR uh, here. So in this slide, we look at how one can accelerate TensorFlow uh, uh, using data parallel distributed deep learning techniques on the Oak Ridge National Labs Summit uh, supercomputing system with almost 1500 GPUs. So here we are using ImageNet 1K with uh, close to 1.2 uh, million images. And we, uh, we, we were able to see that MRAPH2 uh, GDR was able to reach close to zero point, like uh, almost half a million images per second uh, of uh, training throughput for the ImageNet 1K benchmark. So if you take a look at this, uh, we can potentially train an entire model using the ImageNet 1K uh, data set in just four, four and a half minutes. So th this is the kind of performance that you can get with MRAPH2 GDR. Unfortunately, we were not able to go uh, using a nickel 2.6 to this scale because we had certain scaling issues with nickel 2 beyond 384 GPUs on this HPC system. Now, in the previous slide, we looked at how one can use MRAPH2 GDR to accelerate deep learning training on uh, a GPU-based system. So now we uh, look at the same on a, a CPU-based system. So here we look at how you can accelerate distributed TensorFlow on Texas Advanced Computing Center's Frontera HPC system on close to 2048 CPU nodes. So we can see that we get near linear uh, scaling performance uh, and we, are a, uh, we can potentially train ResNet50 in just seven minutes. So that's some awesome scaling performance right there. So here we show some more numbers uh, on how you can use uh, PyTorch with the uh, Horovod and DeepSpeed at scale uh, for training ResNet50 on 256 V100 GPUs. So the training performance uh, on uh, LASN was close to 10,000 images per second faster than nickel based training. So here we uh, look at multiple communication substrates that PyTorch can use like Torch Distributed, Horovod and DeepSpeed. And we see that for all the different communication substrates, MRAPH2 GDR is able to significantly outperform NVIDIA's uh, uh, collective communication uh, layer. Now, this is a very interesting and important slide uh, on how we are working with pathologists and uh, other computational scientists to enable artificial intelligence driven digital pathology. So now if you look at it, there's a sample whole slide image of a tissue that uh, typically is given to a pathologist for observation. Now, a lot of computational pathologists have been trying to make this process of detecting, uh, let's say, anomalies in this whole slide image automated by using deep learning solutions. But the problem is this. Because of the restricted amount of G, uh, memory on the GPUs, uh, one cannot do this on smaller scales. So each WSI is close to 100, like 100,000 across 100,000 pixels. So it obviously cannot fit in a GPU memory. So we need advanced distributed deep learning techniques 
to make this a reality for pathologists. So this is where we worked with uh, computational uh, pathologists and uh, real, uh, uh, let's say, MDs uh, in the field at the Ohio State University to accelerate uh, their deep learning training, which previously used to take uh, almost 32 hours and we moved it to an HPC system and we were able to uh, finish the entire operation in just 27 minutes. So this is an awesome uh, scale up uh, that we were able to obtain. And uh, this is an ongoing work uh, between us and uh, various uh, other uh, folks at the Ohio State University. Um, thanks Hari for going over the, the deep learning um, uh, report um, in the um, MAPIS2 libraries and how and applications can really take advantage of uh, the MAPIS2 GDR library for GPU-based uh, deep learning and also MAPIS2X for the CPU-based deep learning. So let me now move forward and try to focus on how you can actually accelerate machine learning applications using uh, uh, MAPIS2 GDR. So what we have done, as you can see here, um, especially the uh, MAPIS2 GDR uh, in the context of like a uh, for machine learning, this is the new architecture we have proposed. So we have here MPI for Pi, and what we have done is the MAPIS2 GDR being included here, so which can actually run on top of, of uh, CUDA, and it also has some, the overall stack also has support for UCX and uh, Nickel, etc. So here, we have actually done optimization of the collectives and tight integration with the, with the QML. Uh, we have a made a release uh, earlier MPI for QML. You can actually visit our website, uh, uh, which is called IDL, High Performance Deep Learning, which we introduced earlier. And uh, the details on the papers are also presented here um, last year in the MLSPC workshop. And these are some benchmarks, traditional benchmarks you can see um, being used by the machine learning community, k-means, linear regression, nearest neighbors, complicated SVD, etc. And now you can see we are comparing if if uh, the if a support is available with only NECL, that is the NVIDIA Collective Communication Library, compared to that, if you use our MAPIS2 GDR library, you see how much speed up you can get. So here you can see um, this is with respect to training time on the left side and the speed up. So you can get a speed up of here like a 1.6. Uh, here also nearest neighbor you can get 1.6. Uh, linear regression is around 1.25. Uh, truncated SVT around 1.4. So so it shows that using the MAPIS2 GDR library with our uh, MPI for QML package, you should be able to extract even higher performance for your uh, machine learning application. Similar things recently we have done for the DASC. This is for data science applications. Again, this is the overall architecture, the DASC architecture. It has a lot of uh, different components. So what we have done is introduce this MPI for DASC and that goes through MPI for Pi and then is linked it with our MAPIS2 GDR. And the DASC architecture currently supports TCP IP. That is like for the regular networks, it also has support for UCX. And these are the boxes which are in yellow um, have been introduced by us. Now, if you if you use our software stack, we made two releases, so MPI for DASC 0.1 and 0.2. Um, again, this is available from our high performance big data website. Uh, if you're interested, please download it. There is a very detailed uh, a user guide, you should be able to follow that and be able to run um, your data science applications. Um, so here we have like a first benchmark, uh, sum of QPy uh, RA and it's transpose. This is running on, on our uh, local OSU cluster. Uh, so here you can see um, compared to like the IP over IV, that is the uh, TCP IP interface and the UCX interface uh, running over InfiniMan, if you try to do MPI for DASC, we are able to really reduce the execution time. Here we are able to get almost like a 3.47x better performance on average. And on the right hand side, um, we are able to uh, reduce like the communication time by almost factor of 6.92x. And then we had this uh, paper published in the CC grade 21. Um, if you are interested, please feel free to uh, take a look at it. Similarly, we have done the benchmark two. Uh, this is a uh, QDF merge. Um, this is running on the TAC Frontera uh, GPU subsystem. Uh, here again, you will see very similar trend, uh, total execution time on the left side and this the merge throughput, uh, throughput higher is the better. Um, so here you can see on the right hand side, we are able to deliver almost factor of like 2.9 to 3 better uh, compared to um, the other uh, uh, solutions. And uh, the left hand side, the total execution time, we are able to also trying to reduce by 
a similar factor like a 2.91. So while we are working, this MIPS2 GDR uh, is going through a very exciting phase. Um, so we are gradually adding more and more features here, both for HPC as well as DL. So I'll try to highlight three things here. Uh, on the fly compression for all 12 collective, you heard about some basic compression scheme earlier. Uh, we are trying to advance it for all 12 collectives, scalable distributed training with model hybrid parallelism uh, for out of code DNN models, and also how to scale single image super resolution. So here, we have a <coughs> excuse me we have an advanced design which is all to all operation itself trying to take advantage of the on the fly compression earlier you saw that we have point to point like the on the fly compression is happening on the point to point communication and of course one can build all to all on top of that but here internally we are able to while the all to all operation is taking place we are able to actually do the um, compression and uh, especially here if you see uh, gfp opt with rate 4 we are able to reduce the latency almost by 87%. Uh, this is for a 16 megabytes data on the Frontera RTX and also on the right hand side is on the Longhorn uh, V100. Uh, here you get almost like 87% uh, benefit. And as some of you might be knowing, uh, there is a the next generation deep learning models, especially the recommendation models are trying to utilize all to all. So we'll be planning to make this release in the near future and you should be able to really see uh, a significant speed up for this uh, recommendation model so for the so that is for the like the recommendation models but now if you see like the regular uh, uh, deep learning thing um, uh, we are trying to accelerate also transformer models uh, and especially here we have introduced something called the sub graph parallelism uh, we had a paper published at the ipdps uh, 2021 um, so here you can see that the the traditional scheme people have been using data parallel design but compared to that, if we now use the data and subgraph parallelism, that is our new hybrid parallelism D and SP, uh, here you can see we try to run it on 1024 GPUs, and here we get almost like a 3.5x speed up over the data parallelism itself. Okay, so, so this is like a the, the red line is the data parallelism, this is like the two way, a four way, um, and an eight way. So as you can see, with a different kind of parallelism, we are able to even give better performance um, and scalability. Similarly, there is a lot of focus these, these days on a, if you take a very large image, single image with a lot of resolution, like super resolution, how do you do the thing? Um, so here, what we have done is, um, we have done a very thorough um, analysis with our uh, MPI driven um, solution. And we have done some optimization that is on this, this column called MPI OPT. And we are comparing with the network. And as you can see that compared to the to the to the default, um, we are able to significantly improve uh, almost factor of like a 26.33. And compared to nickel also, it tries to deliver even better performance. So this paper was actually published uh, at the um, SCADL workshop in the conjunction with IPDPS uh, 21. Again, uh, please feel free to uh, take a look at this. So as we are moving. Um, earlier, I indicated um, uh, we have these libraries available to a lot of distros, and recently we have been focusing a lot of uh, the distribution through SPAN uh, because that is getting a lot of momentum. Um, so you can actually do very easy installation of our MIP2 libraries through Spark. Uh, uh, we have uh, the support of the uh, all the three major libraries: MIP2, MIP2 X, and MIP2 GDR. We have a detailed Spark-based installation user guide. Uh, please feel free to take a look at this, and it will exactly tell you the step by step. Uh, to to um, install um, our libraries on your system. And once you install these, um, as we indicated through the earlier examples, you should be able to utilize these uh, for your HPC machine learning, deep learning, and data science um, applications. So with this uh, uh, kind of the, let me try to conclude the presentation here. Um, we have been continuously innovating this project uh, over the last 20 years, as you saw. Uh, our next goal is to really go for the very large scale exascale systems which are coming up. Um, so here we are uh, aiming for performance and memory scalability towards almost 10 million cores um, and uh, efficient support for the hybrid programming models, um, continuous optimizations for GPU support and accelerators, more and more GPUs like for example, Intel GPUs are coming, new kinds of FPGAs are coming. And also the networks are also providing more and more features like the tag matching, um, adapter memory, 
uh, Intel Octane architecture uh, for the high bandwidth memory, CAFE interface. So these are some of our on our roadmap. Uh, we'll be um, adding uh, more and more advanced features uh, with respect to our MAPs to release, and then we'll be uh, pushing this uh, further. So in the end, I'd like to um, extend uh, acknowledgements to all our sponsors. Uh, here is a list of uh, uh, all our uh, sponsors, the funding agencies. Uh, not only we have a lot of support from uh, major national uh, funding agencies like National Science Foundation, Office of uh, Science. Um, but we also have a lot of uh, funding support from the industry. Uh, these are all listed here. Um, and uh, with uh, generous funding from all of the industry, and also a lot of equipment donations, we are able to actually carry out our research and make this project uh, continuously uh, trying to sustain uh, over the last um, uh, 20 years. But last but not the least, these are all um, our heroes. Uh, as you can see, uh, we are trying to summarize uh, the results of our project, which is a 20 years long project. So a lot of students, staff, uh, um, have actually come uh, to Ohio State, uh, joined my group, and contributed to these projects. And then we have been trying to build um, on top of uh, each other's work. And uh, so every time I try to present, I'd like to really um, salute um, all these heroes. Um, so with this, let me uh, conclude the presentation here. Um, uh, if you have any questions, uh, uh, please feel free to um, uh, send us an email. Um, we'll also be online uh, during this uh, the actual presentation time. Um, uh, we'll be able to uh, answer questions um, directly online or if you um, view this video later on, uh, please feel free to send us uh, questions using any of these email addresses and uh, we'll be very happy to um, answer the questions. Um, so with this, uh, let me stop here. Um, um, I hope you like the conference. Uh, and also, uh, if you have not used uh, MAPIS2 libraries, uh, please feel free to use these, and you will be able to extract uh, higher performance and scalability uh, for all your applications. Uh, thank you.